So I just quietly rode off into the sunset. I never retired from the game of golf. I never said I quit. I just quietly rode off in the sunset, and, and I, here I am. But you got to 1996 at the Masters. How were you feeling physically going into that? Um, I was hurting. My back was hurting. Um, I had bad hip, I had bad back, just from all the rotation and hitting the ball as hard as I hit it. Um, I was still, I was feeling pretty good, but I knew there was something not right with my golf swing and I couldn't put my finger on it. Butch couldn't put his finger on it. Um, you know, I was working the work to try to understand it, but I, I couldn't get it. Even though I played well, I got to myself, put myself in a position. So you're surprised you're playing that well those first three days? Yes, I, I was actually, um, because I, I just didn't feel like my normal golfer body me. What was said the night before with your you're around friends. You're leading by six shots. Um, Anybody coronating you and saying? Oh, no, look, uh, there was a British journalist called Peter De Bruyne, a crotchety old, you know, palm, great guy. Got on very well with him. And there's Peter at the end of the bar drinking his scotch. And he says, yeah, not even you can fuck up a six-shot lead tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my French. So I walk out and I go, oh, my gosh, why did they even say something like that, right? Because you, you don't want to have that yet. And so I walk out and I'm going, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. Get in the car and just, just, just go home. And um, so anyway, that was, that was Peter. But you know, he meant it in, in good, you know, all in good faith and honesty. And... Uh, but that was the last thing that I remember that really rattled my cage a bit, you know, when I look back on it. Faldo didn't want to let go of you. It really looked like that, that he was holding on. And I, I don't know what was said, but I think that was like a genuine, I, I'm excited I just won the Masters, but I don't know what to say to you. You know, yeah, I'll tell you what he said. He said, um, it was about the media. He said, don't let the bastards get to you. Because, you know, you have to go to the media room. You have to face your music right. Nothing wrong with that. That's, that's part. They got their profession. I got my profession. Um, but that's what he, he didn't want them to get into my head. You have a great quote. It's one of my favorite quotes with an athlete. You expect success. You respect failure. Failure can humble you. It can. And, and that, that tournament there, um, I still have probably... Eight to 12,000 letters from people from that tournament um, who, who wrote to me that, because I wanted to save each and every one of them uh, because it was really important because most of them were like, you taught me so much. You've helped me teach my children so much. I went to the school where my kids were at the following week and I went to the soccer field where my son was playing soccer and this guy came up to me and he put his arm around me. He said, you've taught me so much how to teach my child about the game, how to you know, respect and, and treat, and even in failure, how you carry yourself. Um, so I actually won that golf tournament in a lot of ways uh, because I learned so much from the outpouring from people around the world. Uh, they wanted me to win. They asked, people wanted Nick to win too, but at the end of the day, from that moment on, my life changed. Why don't you still play? People love you. The f way I'm fit today and my flexibility, if I decided to go out and start hitting balls for the next three to six months, I think I could get out there and compete again, but I just don't want to do it. What's next for you? I would love to instill a little bit of the experience and knowledge that I've developed, whether it's through failure or whether it's through success. I see great players today on TV making fundamental mistakes, and it just irks me where I just want to jump through that TV screen and just say, hey, you crazy idiot, this one, <laughs> I can help you, I can help you, I can help you. But you know, But imagine if somebody <laughs> wanted to do that to you back when you well, were Jack playing. Jack did, Jack yeah. Nicholas did. But that was the one guy you could listen to. Yes, there were other players too. I yeah. could. Raymond Floyd was a great one, Tom Watson. His great comment to me, once you bite that snake's head off, that snake's dead forever. That's all he had to tell me. Nothing about my goal swing, anything like that. It just get whatever demons in your head, bite that head off and throw it away. 
So, um, you know, he, when he told me that, I had a couple little things I used to do mentally. When I wore a hat, I used to squat down on the side of the green, close my eyes, know the TV couldn't see you because of the hat. And if I was in such a bad mood, there'd be two things I'd do myself. I'd take my thumb and I'd shove it underneath my rib cage. And it really hurts, by the way. It really hurts as hard as you can to take all that pain and just take that, everything bad you got in your head, and it'll come out in here and then you go, okay. And the other one was I'd close my eyes and the old toilets with a chain on it, I would close my eyes and I'd pull the chain and I'd flush all the shit out of me. <laughs> Mentally picture everything, everything bad in my body, I would just <laughs> dump it right out there and then and my body would go, <laughs> done. <laughs>